Hey everybody, welcome back to Upper Michigan today on this Thursday. We have two shows in one today. Mm -hmm. The first topic we're kind of covering is the Isle Royal in Kiwana Parks Association. I, I had to think about it. I was like, wait, am I, am I saying all the words right? Um, yes, Isle Royal and Kiwana Parks Association. We're here with the executive director, Mark Wilcox. First of all, thank you for joining us today, making the snowy trek down. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you very much. It was only snowy to launch, then it was sunny and bright all the way to Oh, beautiful. oh the beautiful. sun beautiful. is shining on us here. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful, we love to hear it. How, how about the areas that you represent? Is the sun shining on those spots? Oh, well, I hope so. You know, it's uh, the sun always shines on Isle Royale and Calumet. Uh, we're the uh, Isle Royale and Keweenaw Parks Association. Every national park has um, a cooperating organization that can do things that the federal government can't. It solicit funds, publish things, operate retail outlets. So we, for years, people might recall that we were the Isle Royale and Natural Isle Royal Natural History Association, but then with the advent of Keweenaw National Historical Park about uh, 30 years ago, we enveloped both. So we raise funds, sponsor programs, do a lot of interesting things for the parks. So tell us about these two areas, Isle Royal and then the Keweenaw National Park. Uh, where are they? What are they? What makes them so special? Well, I remember as a, as a young person studying Michigan history in Mr. Weingartner's seventh grade <laughs> class in Rock, high school, um, learning that Isle Royale was Michigan's only national park. Yeah. And it's the only island national park. And it's in Lake Superior. It's actually closer to Canada and Minnesota, but because of its connection with the mining industry, which was so big in uh, the copper country, um, it became part of Michigan. And we're looking at some video right now of Isle Royale specifically. Um, you know, for it is the least visited park. But the most, the most uh, revisited. Yes. Uh, so people who go fall in love with it. Why do you think that is? You know, I had been in the Copper Country since the early 90s and always said, you know, the, visiting the park was something I was going to get around to someday. Yeah. And I really didn't. I was there 30 plus years and then I got this job last summer and as I'm pulling into Windigo, there's two harbors on the island, Windigo and the larger one is Rock Harbor, and then I, I got it, mm. you know, the vibe, aura, call it what you want, but it's a very special place. And as you mentioned, it's among the least visited parks. Uh, I think there's a couple in Alaska that get fewer people, but among the most revisited, and you get it once you're there. Yeah. Some people will visit Yosemite once or Yellowstone once. People will visit Isle Royale, will come from all over the country and visit Isle Royale several times a summer yeah you know it's just and it's not an island per se people I was just talking to somebody the other day it's uh, an archipelago there's 400 islands which is so wild that there's 400 islands out there I mean when you go to yeah. think that you're among 400 islands it doesn't feel that well they, some are big yeah. some are small so you kind of get it and then on the island itself there's something like 30 some lakes Mm -hmm. So there's lakes and rivers on the island. Yeah. It's a special place. And then Keweenaw National yeah. Historical Park, not as well known um, nationally because it's young by mm -hmm. national park standards. It's 30 years old. But uh, it's interesting because it celebrates the copper mining industry in the copper country. And it's not, um, it isn't as defined as say Isle Royale is. You know you're there or you're not there. Yeah. Because it's made up of, uh, of around 30 cooperating sites. Oh. So there is a wonderful museum downtown, um, the Visitor Center in the Union Building in downtown Calgamet, but throughout the whole area ranging as far away from Greenland uh, in Ontonagon County. Uh, these are sites, there's mines, there's uh, schoolhouses, mm. um, people might know, and I think you use it on some of your uh, images, um, the Quincy Mine sure. Shaft. That's one of the participating. Okay. The, Quincy, um, the Quincy Smelter, right uh, on the waterfront. That's another one. There's several down there. So the, um, the historical park has a wonderful, like I said, the Union Building, a wonderful museum. They offer tours of the area. And it's just a way to celebrate the mining industry, um, the copper mining industry in uh, Calumet. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I know you don't work specifically for those individual parks. You work for the organization. But right. do you happen to know visitation numbers, what, what that was like at Isle Royale or the Keweenaw uh, National Park the, over the summer? Yeah, we just had a, uh, we have a very close relationship with mm -hmm. the parks. Matter of fact, anything we sell, any program we do, any education thing we offer, it has to be approved by the park. It's part of our, our charter. 
Um, but I understand that visitation was set a record wow. this year. And I know at our retail outlets, we have two of them on the, on the island, we set records uh, this year. So, and they had, in walking in the visitor center in Calumet, nearly 60,000 people over the course mm. of the summer. So the, and it's interesting because it's an island, you can only get there three it's ways. It's not easy to get there, but you, you're not you know, just making a quick stop by. No, no. Right. there are, you can do day trips, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a ferry that leaves Calumet, so you can spend like three, four hours on the island just to cross it off your bucket list, but uh, don't You're do never going to want to yeah. leave after three hours. <laughs> exactly. I've, you know, I have known people to do that day trip, and I'm like, how did you get back on the boat? How did how yeah. did you not s just decide to camp out? You know that would be that'd be tough. It's it's really now. Have you been? Yes, a couple of times. That's yes. a Tia told Yeah, me. yeah, and I absolutely love it. We're planning on going this um, spring, mm -hmm. and we're really looking My forward first to time. it. Yeah, yeah this first time. But Let you know, know. Yeah. oh, I will. Overall, uh, what would you say is the biggest mission of the association? What is what is your role? Your primary duty to and role to support the park. You know, and that support can come financially. It can come from. Um, public awareness, it can come from education. Um, our organization, we can accept funds, and those funds have to be expended in one of four so-called buckets, either education, uh, interpretation, uh, historical preservation, or research, and, and that's it. So if someone wants to donate um, money to build a trail, um, can't do that because okay. it doesn't fall in those four buckets if someone wants to give money to QAnon National Historical Park to put up park benches. Um, there's other ways you can do that, but it's got to be through us. It's got to be education, interpretation, historical preservation research. All right. Well, we are going to talk a little bit more about how your organization, um, it, the structure mm -hmm. and how people can get involved. And uh, in a minute, though, we have to take a break. Sure. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs>